In this video, we'll look at another way to analyze nonlinear systems differential equations via null clines. So another way we can analyze these sorts of systems is via null clines. And first off, what is a null cline? Well, a null cline is a line or curve along which at least one derivative in the system is zero. So I don't need every part of the system to be zero, just one part. And that will give me a line or curve along which one of these things is zero. It's easier to find these than to find equilibrium solutions because they are sort of the components that lead you towards that. Because if you think about it, an intersection of two appropriate null clines from opposite derivatives gives you equilibrium solutions. Because if each one corresponds to one being zero and they cross, that means at that point both are zero. But the way we can use this for our analysis is the fact that we know that along a null cline, the solution would either go directly horizontal or directly vertical because one of the derivatives is zero, so it has to move just in the other direction. And in between them, we can get sort of a idea of which way the solution in general moves, whether it's like up left, down left, up right or down right, based on the sign of the two derivatives in these different regions because we know they can only change sign if you cross a null cline. This is getting closer and closer to the idea of the phase line stuff that we have for autonomous equations, but we get more out of it, it had to be more complicated because we're dealing with systems now instead of just a single equation. Let's look at this in more detail via an example. So this example we did before for the competing species model type of problem. Let's draw some axes and look at finding the null clines. Now the null clines are really going to come out of the same process we used to find our equilibrium solutions. So in terms of the dx dt null clines, we get one for x equals zero, just because that's the first factor in the product, and one from three minus x minus y equals zero, or y equals three minus x. So x equals zero, that's the y-axis, and y equals three minus x, that's gonna be a sloped line that hits at three and three. For the y derivative, we get y equals zero and three minus two y minus 0.5 x equals zero or rearranging y equals three halves minus one fourth x. The so y equals zero, that is the x axis. And then the other is a line that's gonna hit at three halves up here and six down here. Now, Based on this, where are the equilibrium solutions? Well, they are at the intersections of purple and orange lines. So I will get one here. This is at three halves zero. I'll get one down here at zero, zero. One over at three, zero. And this one in the middle, we know is at two, one. By the way, from the graph here. Now, in terms of directions and arrows and things, let's look at the purple null clines. So on the purple null clines, we know that dx dt is zero. So I'm moving vertically across the purple ones. What happens up here? Well, up here, let's say I'm in this region here at like x equals one, y is two or something. That's up in here somewhere. Then what happens? Well, if, if x is one and y is two, then my y derivative, positive, three, minus four is negative is negative, it's negative, which means that along this part of the null cline, I am moving downward because my y derivative is negative and my x is zero. I can also check down here and see that on that side, I'm moving upward. We can do the same checks for the orange lines. If I check in this region here, I know that my y derivative is zero, so moving horizontally, Question, am I going left or am I going right? Well, if I'm over here at x equals one and y equals in this case like five fourths, then I know that for x is one and y is five fourths, I will get x being one times three minus one minus five fourths is still positive, so I'm going to the right. These ones are right arrows. And a similar check will say that these here, I have left arrows. But now we can combine these together. This means that in the region down here, the x will be going to the right because it was going to the right over here, and it can't change going right to left until I cross the purple null cline. So this is going to the right, 
this is going up, therefore in this sort of quadrant down here, we're going up and right. We can fill in the other arrows too. Over here it's down and right, here it's down and left, here it's up and left. So the fact that we got a nodal sink out of this makes sense. Everything from all sides is pointing in towards that point. So the idea of the nodal sink here seems to fit with this analysis as well. You would want to confirm that it was actually a nodal sink based on the equation of linearization, but it fits with the picture of the fact that everything should seem to point in towards the center as this develops. So the, the population, wherever it starts, should make its way in towards the middle following these trajectories in one way or another. This doesn't give me the actual trajectory. These are the general flow of this equation. So how in general it's going to behave, but not the exact path it's going to follow. So that's the idea of null clines and the idea of how we can use them to help us analyze nonlinear systems. In this case, where these are all lines, it's nice and simple. You can also have ones where it's curves, and you're trying to sort of you have a curve for a null cline, and you're trying to use that to interpret how this is going to behave over time. And what's going to happen as this situation evolves for these different populations or these different whatever you are modeling for this nonlinear problem.